Good morning, everyone, and a happy Easter. Ah, everyone's not awake yet. Come on, we can do a little. We can do a little bit better than that. Happy Easter. Happy. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It's so good to be with you this morning. Um, it's been like three years, I think, until, since we've all been able to be in a room together at Easter to be able to celebrate. Um, so really glad you can join us today. And um, for those of, of you that are online as well. So good to have you with us. And if you're here trying church today, you are so very welcome. Or maybe you're here with one of the guys that are going to be baptized in a bit. Um, it's really great to have you with us as well. Um, now, you probably noticed that right now watching the news is quite difficult, isn't it? Um, in fact, it can be just really hard, really depressing. Do you know there's wars, stabbings, coronavirus? And it just feels like there's one bad news story after another. Um, one of the things I've loved, though, amidst all of this is um, there's a bunch of good news accounts that are like on social media and stuff, and just with the sole aim of sharing good news stories. Um, and it's almost like they're a bit of an antidote to some of these tough stories that we hear. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've heard about um, a woman who lost her leg to cancer. Um, she is now nearing a world record of running 102 marathons in 102 days. Isn't that astonishing? I can barely get up on the stage. So. Um, and then you've got Ukrainian refugees cleaning up parks and public spaces in Poland um, to thank the people of Ho Poland for hosting them. Now, I don't want to diminish anything that's going on in the world right now, but I do just want to show you a couple of very short uh, videos that I hope are, at the very least put a smile on your face. How are you? I am fine, thank you. How much is one of these? This is 400 pesos. It's 20 US dollars. 20 US yes. dollars? Did you make this? Yes, I make. How long did this take you to make? For well, each one day. Can I buy all of them? Todo, todo? See? Si. Yes. All of them. Todo, todo, todo? Yeah. <gasps> oh, thank you. Is it hard right now? You don't have the, the money, the people right now. It's, what's the total? 8,700? Uh -huh. Before you put them away? This is for you. Okay. 10,000. But I just want this one. Only this? You keep those. Oh, thank you. That's it. Really? I'm that serious. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you're amazing. You. I love you. Thank you for it. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Isn't it remarkable how like one good thing that we can do can just means so much to one individual. And I just want to show you one more thing, slightly more whimsical. It's very short, but enjoy it. It's coming up. <laughs> there you go. Dogs. Babies, you can't go wrong with that, can you? So, uh, yeah, I love how they both just enjoy each other's company so much. So, that's good. So, we all need a little bit of good news, right? We need that in our lives. We need that in the world around us right now. Um, I want to jump back 2,000 years to the very first Easter Sunday. Um, the disciples and followers of Jesus had woken up um, for the second day, knowing that Jesus, their friend, their teacher, their everything had, had been crucified, had, been, had died horribly on a cross and for the second day in a row they were like felt hopeless it felt like there was no hope in their world right at that moment so the roman authorities they knew that jesus had died they took his body down from the cross and he was put in a tomb a cave with a huge stone in front of it guarded by roman soldiers who weren't you know used to being timid or anything like that they were probably big strong soldiers that would have stopped anything from getting in their way and it's here that we're going to pick up this story in John chapter 20. John is one of the Gospels in the New Testament part of the Bible. But before we do that, I'd love to just pray for us, um, and then we will read together. So Lord, I thank you so much for the words we're about to read. I thank you for the good news that is in there. And I pray that these words would come alive to us, whether we're reading these for the first time or the 10,000th time. Lord, I pray that they would be alive to us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So if you have a Bible with you, you know, do grab that, or you, maybe you've got a device, you can, you can bring it up. The words are going to come up behind me. I'm going to read the first two verses and then jump ahead um, after that. So early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, 
Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. And we're going to skip forward to to verse 11. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. I'm just imagining her with tears kind of falling down her face, like foggy. You know, she can't see what's ahead of her. Jesus, uh, um, so she says, he says, woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away. <laughs> the good news is coming, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me where, have you, where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, I love that, he just says her name. She turns towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. She is the first person that Jesus sees. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. I love that. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. These are incredible words, aren't they? Um, I, I love how Mary comes into this story completely surprised, bewildered. Where have they put him? And then we see her weeping, broken. But by the end of these verses, she has incredibly good news to share with her friends. Now this morning, I'm going to share a little bit about the good news of Easter and why this is, in fact, the greatest news story of all time. And I hope what I share is helpful, whether you're exploring faith, maybe you're trying church, you're just here, um, you know, because someone's offered you a free lunch afterwards. Whatever reason you're here, you're so very welcome, and I hope what I share is helpful now. So the good news of Easter, it tells us that everyone is welcome. So Mary, we've read about her. She's the first person to see the risen Jesus. Now, if you go back to the first century world, the testimony of a woman really didn't count for much. But Jesus rips apart the expectations of the day. Mary goes to the tomb first thing in the morning with a couple of other women. We know that from the other accounts that we have. Partly, I'm sure, just to take some time to mourn in peace. But when she arrives, she sees that the stone is rolled away. What has happened? Why is the tomb empty? How is the tomb empty? And probably most importantly, she was thinking, where have they taken Jesus? Now, as a woman, she probably knew that her word counted for little, perhaps nothing at all. And so she runs off to find the disciples to tell them what she has found so that she has someone to back up her evidence. When Mary finds them, Peter and probably John run to the tomb and they too discover what Mary has found, that the stone has been rolled away, the Roman soldiers aren't there anymore, and Jesus' body is gone. But instead of staying around to find out what's happened, what do the men do? They rush off as quickly as they arrived at the scene to tell the other disciples what's happened. Maybe there was some fear in them as well. But Mary is left on her own. And and so Mary, what she does, and I think this is really important, Mary waits. Maybe you're sat here this morning and you're asking yourself, is this Jesus real? I think that's a really good question to ask. And if you're wondering that for yourself, maybe that's a question you ask and you ask him to reveal yourself, himself to you today. Is Jesus going to answer my prayers? Is he going to help me find a job, help me, you know, heal me? For some of us, though, I think this is just an invitation to slow down, to wait, to be patient and allow him to reveal himself to, to you. 
The reality is, I think so many of us right now, after the last couple of years that we have had, are incredibly worn out and tired. And I'm probably not the only one. Anyone else feel a bit like that? Yeah, a few of us, a few murmurings. But, you know, Isaiah 40, Isaiah is one of the prophets, you know, writing a few hundred years before Jesus was born. He says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And if you feel like you need some of that energy today, why don't you take some time amidst this Easter weekend to slow down, to meditate maybe on this story, to rest, to wait on the Lord so that your strength is renewed. You know, I think in life we're really quick to rush off to the next thing, aren't we? We love, you know, what's happening now, but what's next? What's next? Sometimes I think we just need to wait like Mary did. And it's in the waiting that Jesus shows himself. And when Mary waits, wow, is she rewarded by being the first person to see the risen Jesus. I love this story. I love how, you know, this is a world where the strong and the powerful, they were the ones lifted up by society. But Jesus comes in, he does things completely differently, doesn't he? He goes out of his way to lift up the least likely, the hurting, the broken. You can read this in the Gospels here. The, those cast aside by society. He raises up the tax collectors, the terrorists, the women. You see, women were treated as second-class citizens in first-century um, Israel. But Jesus treated them with dignity and respect. He treats women as people of worth, empowering women, honoring them publicly. Women were amongst his staunchest and closest allies. For women like Mary Magdalene, who we're told had had seven demons driven out of her, whilst we don't know what her struggles were, what we do know is that Mary had chosen to follow Jesus, to take Jesus at his word, and had followed him, supported him, just as Jesus had supported and honored her and others. And unlike most of the men who had fled in fear in Jesus' darkest moment, she was still there as Jesus was dying, hanging on the cross. And two days later, whilst the men were still in hiding, she's amongst the first to go to Jesus' tomb on that first Easter Sunday. Now we read in other accounts that it was she and one or two other women that went to the tomb, and she is rewarded by being the first to see the risen Jesus. I love that Jesus chooses Mary. You know, it would have been so much safer to go with one of the men, but Jesus doesn't play the safe game. He chooses a woman, and in, and in doing so, I believe, he demonstrates that in God's kingdom, all are accepted. He says that everyone is welcome in light of what Jesus did on the cross, in his life, in rising from the dead, and even defeating death itself. Now, you may be sat here thinking that you are the least likely person that Jesus would want to have anything to do with. But you know, the story of Mary tells us that he welcomes people like you and me. Regardless of how many times we mess up, how many mistakes we make, what we think about ourselves, and sometimes we're our own biggest enemies, aren't we? How many times we believe that we are not enough, we are not good enough. Or how many times we perhaps turn our back on Jesus. We've chosen another path. But more than just accept, Jesus longs for you to come to him. Because Jesus didn't just die for those who seemingly have it all together. And that's really the reality, isn't it? He died for every single one of us, especially those that don't actually have it all together even to those the world has rejected. You see, on the cross, he took upon himself all the wrong that we ever do so that we can be free. Everyone is welcome. Everyone, each one of us in this room today. And more than that, he calls us by name. Now, for those of you that um, know me, you'll know that I like my coffee which means that if I ever have the misfortune of walking into a Starbucks, I'm more likely to order a tea or a cold drink. You see, so that, what I'm trying to say is basically that if you, if you have a 
drink in Starbucks, if you have a coffee in Starbucks, you normally put syrups in it, cream, just to take away the taste of the coffee. So, which is why when I walked into a coffee shop one day and I found uh, this unique use of a, of a Starbucks mug, um, I found that very edifying. <laughs> Now, if, you, if you've ever been in Starbucks, you'll know that they're really big on using names. So when you order a drink, they'll ask for your name and we'll write a name in big capital letters on there. But it's not necessarily going to be your name, is it? Um, I, there was a guy called Brandon. I don't know if you can see this behind me. So Brandon walks into Starbucks, orders a coffee. And he says, it says, Brendan, sorry if I spelled your name wrong. This is a stressful job, but I tried my best. That's good. So a few years back in a really weak moment, I really needed a coffee. I went into a Starbucks. I ordered a coffee. They asked for my name. I said Rob, which I think is fairly easy. There's only three letters. There's not a lot to get wrong. Um, and anyway, I got, my coffee came back with four letters on the cup. R-O-S-E. Rose. <laughs> now, I've got nothing against the name Rose. It's a beautiful name. It's the name of my mother-in-law, so it's a really important name. <laughs> That's just in case she watches later. But it's not my name. It's not my name. And of course, I'm an adult, and I'm so over it, but I'm not going to buy another coffee from Starbucks. <laughs> um, but you see, there's something so important about our names. A name is part of our identity, isn't it? And a name can carry deep, personal, cultural, family, even historical connections. And that's why I love and why I think it's so significant that we read in verse 16 that Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary. He simply says her name. And with that, immediately Mary recognizes Jesus. She's mistaken him for a gardener. But she knows that it's Jesus because of her, him saying her name. And in this moment, this is the moment where everything changes. Not just, and I'm, I'm back, um, but for everyone, for all time, Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. And in the midst of all this, I'm sure Mary can't make sense of what's going on. But when Jesus uses her name, he is acknowledging that he knows her. He acknowledges that he accepts her, that he loves her, and that he is rewriting her story. See, the Bible tells us that God knows everything about us. We're told that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I don't know whether you look in the mirror sometimes and have doubts about that. I do sometimes. But God even knows the number of hairs on our head. He knows you. He knows everything. Just, and so just as G, his son Jesus called Mary, he calls you today. He calls you by name. He knows you. He knows everything about you. And yet he accepts you just as you are. And he loves you more than you will ever imagine. To rewrite your story. <laughs> yeah. He calls you to him. And, and more than that, he offers each of us a new start. I, lo I love how we read in verse 1, early on the first day of the week. So for all of us, whether, we're, whether we've ever met Jesus, whether we know who Jesus is, whether we've been following us, him for years, he offers us a new start day by day, and that's a brilliant thing. And this is the start of a new day. It's the start of a new week. But it, I believe it's so much more than that. In this moment, this is the most miraculous moment in history. Jesus died. He was buried, but he rose again on the start of a new day, a new week, a new moment in history. There's so much historical evidence that Jesus lived, first of all. And we can be sure that Jesus died because the Romans were experts in making sure they killed people. And there are also a significant number of eyewitness accounts of the risen Jesus, beginning with Mary in the garden right there. And if you want to explore more about that, just, you know, highly recommend the book that was mentioned earlier that Emeka um, showed us. So grab one of those from the back there, Why Jesus. It's got some really helpful stuff in there. Now, I, I hope this doesn't come as a, as a spoiler to you, but death is going to come to us all. 
And, you know, no one in history has managed to avoid death. No one has managed to defeat death except for one person, and that is Jesus, the Son of God. And that is the good news of of Easter. I love how John, earlier in his gospel, he summarizes it in chapter 3 like this. In these famous verses, he says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he carried the weight of every wrong thing we have ever done. He he took on all of what the Bible calls sin. The author, Dane Ortland, he says, puts it like this. He says, Christ on the cross absorbed our shame, absorbed the shame we deserve to free us from it. You see, Jesus didn't come to condemn us. He came to pay a price for us to forgive us, to give us life. He drew a line in the sand. As the Bible tells us, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, today, right in this moment, he offers each of us a new start. He offers you a new start today. And he longs for everyone to accept his invitation to a life of abundance, a life lived to the full, and life for eternity with him. A life where we can be free from shame, free from guilt. Isn't that a remarkable thing? A life where we are free to be the people we've been made to be. You see, whatever has gone before, whatever mistakes we have made, whatever mistakes we keep on making, Jesus has already changed it all by dying on the cross. That's the moment marked in history. He has changed everything. And in him, All things are made new. And all we have to do is to say yes to him. We have to say yes to him and he will come into our lives and he will transform our lives. It might only take a moment to say yes, but when we say yes to him, it does, it changes every moment thereafter. You know, we see in this story of Mary, Mary who enters this story with tears, experiencing pain, Yet we see a different Mary by verse 18, don't we? She's the one going to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. She had good news to share with her friends. You see, this is the greatest news story of all time, and it is worth sharing with those around us. Because meeting the risen Jesus, just like it did for Mary, meeting him changes everything. And for those who are being baptized today, that's, that's your story. Jesus has changed everything for you, and we're going to celebrate that in a little bit. But if you've never encountered the risen Jesus, I want to invite you to make that choice today, to follow Jesus, to say yes to him, to live into your life. So I'm going to pray a prayer. What I'd love you to do, if, you, if, if we could all just close our eyes just for a minute, it won't be too long. I'm going to pray a prayer. Why don't you make that prayer your own? As, as I pray it. So Jesus, thank you that you lived. Thank you that you died for me. And thank you that you rose again. I choose to say yes to you today. Lord, I'm so sorry for all the wrong that I've done. Please forgive me. And right now, I accept your gift of life. Come and live with me now. In Jesus' name, amen.